Hello there, welcome to Herman Manyora's YouTube channel. My name is Gerald Cabrera. I'm here with Herman Manyora. I'm laughing because you're stretching as I'm yeah. starting. Mm. You're in pain. Yeah. Your arm has never I healed. I strained my arm and it's, it's not healing. Mm. I wanted to talk about the current government. We start with Moses Kura. Of course, you have so many friends in government, but he's come out saying he'll ban Mutumba once they get things in order. <laughs> and uh, there's so much there's this conversation happening. These were the guys who were saying they even went to Gikomba, bought some boxes yeah. in Gikomba. Populism. Now, Populism. It, what it, we are saying with Okinya. Uh, Populism. You want votes at all costs. And it's always very bad. Now they're going to ban Mitumba. We had a but now they are showing that. Kenyans they shouldn't have been trusted with the government. House. That's what Kenyans are concluding. How so? How so? But everything you said, you are going around and you said Mitumba wonderful things. We can't ban them. Raila and 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 Raila Kusema and ban Mitumba. Yeah. Poor old man. Raila simply said, we want to to revive our cotton growing, revive cotton industries. Mm modernize them, mm. and certainly those selling Mitumba will happily sell the new cloth at better profits, better margins, yeah. better business. Ah, wakaruka, Raila nataka ku, wakaenda ku, wakanua songs, underwear. I even have some tweets here. Duale yeah. said, the trade minister, he hates Mitumba, he hates its traders. I have here Johnson Muzama said, almost 4 million are in Mitumba. Truly, Raila Odinga has no idea of the struggles of Kenyans. Didmas Baraza said, almost the same things, threats by one Raila. And now they're in government. They you can see what I was saying. Raila had a program for the country. A vision for the country. The other side wanted power. Which they got. And we must congratulate them. Mm. But you can see they were not ready to govern. But at least now they are heading so towards the right... Between had a clear program for the country. Would you agree they are heading towards the right direction? Because politics has ended. Mm. The election has gone. Populism gone. Now they are putting their house in order. But it's, so sometimes... You see, in public affairs, especially in political issues, governance and running a country, mm. legitimacy is a very important thing. People must feel you are rightfully in power. And they must feel they support you, which is compromised if they feel you conned them. Okay. If people feel you conned them to get power, then issues of legitimacy will be hovering over you. Mm. Yeah. And it's not, no, no government wants that. No presidents want to govern a country with issues, issues of legitimacy. And that's why Uhuru was able to speak to Raila and come up with a handshake. Mm. Because issues of legitimacy are always very, very serious. You may do your best, you may work very well, but if the people you govern feel you ought not to be governing them, for one reason or the other, in this instance, if many Kenyans believe, most Kenyans believe you conned your way into power, you will have a problem with issues of legitimacy. Now, through this, through whatever this. good thing you do, People will not trust. Through that, just this statement from Moses Kuri, yeah, you conclude it's, it's, it's not a small matter. It's a con. In other countries, something like this can send you home. Simple like that. Oh, you, you're yeah. exaggerating I'm on that one. You. But I want us to go to another. But you're exaggerating on that one. Send Moses Kuri home. <laughs> For real. But talk, talk to me about NSSF. Some say your other friend, Francis Atuoli, is now. My in, other friend. I have many friends. You have so many friends. He's now in Ruto's bag. He has agreed with Ruto's plan to move NSSF if payment. Atuoli, if 200 Atuoli shillings were, to 6%. If Francis Atuoli were is to, to agree or was yeah. or was to agree with what Ruto is proposing, has. would that mean, if he has agreed with the idea of increased payment for NSSF, yeah. would that mean he's in Ruto's pocket? Well, he was the one who's, who, who did, in, they went to court in 2014, I guess. Yes. Because the act was passed in 2013. Okay, and now they were there to stop it. Now you have made your point. Yes. So if he didn't want it and now he wants. Yes. Could we therefore, must we conclude now he's doing so because Ruto is president and therefore he's in Ruto's pocket? Is it bad for... Can it also mean that uh, emerging information has made a totally change his mind? It's possible also, eh? It's also possible. But you are free to think yeah. he now wants to please Ruto. Well, uh, before your tea was was brought, you know, 
People say you go to citizen to have tea. Eh? Now, now I am my own tea. Yeah? To make a show kidogo upele chai. Tell them see tuko na chai. I want you to talk to me about NSSF now. Yes. This move from 200 shillings to 6%. Uh, people contributing equally per payment. Is this a good move? Because some would say those who are earning less than uh, 25,000 shillings, they're going to be hard compared to those earning in their millions. That's on the face of it. 200 is a joke. Even for the lowest earner, mm. how much will you save? By the time you retire, surely, if you are paying 200, mm. you'll go home with nothing. So it should be more. But this must be balanced against certain facts. Mm. What are our average salaries in this country? Mm -hmm. Because contribution is a saving. And savings must come from an income that gives you some surplus. Oh yeah, true. You can't earn 10,000. Your house rent in Kibra is 3,000. Food is 4,000. Something else, then total, you need more than 10,000. And someone says you to save even five shillings. Mm. Because saving is a surplus. Yeah. So we must create living wages in this country. Mm -hmm. After we have created living wages, we give people reasonable salaries. Mm. Then we should naturally encourage Kenyans to, to save mm. in various forms. Not even mandatory, not even this lazima way. In the, in the, no, mm. even voluntary saving. That must be encouraged. Do you think this and at that time, mm. it will be very, it will make a lot of sense for NSSF contributions to be increased. Okay. For now, we need to do it with a little more caution. Why? Employers in this country, anytime you involve them in some payment, mm. they always feel you're antagonizing them. A country that needs investment cannot afford to antagonize investors. And that's what many of the employers are. So as you ask, an increment in the contribution from the employer, employee, yeah. naturally triggering, triggering in top-up contribution from the employer. You must know what the employer will feel. Yes. And the question of cheap, affordable, and expensive labor is at the core of investments. And that's why you see made in China, made in India, yeah. these American products. Yes. Japanese, Sony, and the rest. They are not made in Japan because relatively the cost of labor in Japan and in America is higher. Yes. So you go to Philippines, you go to Thailand, you mm. come to Africa where labor is cheap, almost free. Yeah. And business people, global business people, the big corporations, always look at the bottom line. Anything that interferes with the profit, yeah. which is normal taxation and things, unionizable members, mm union demands for better salaries mm. and this kind of levy. So you must weigh against it very, very carefully. Mm. But if you ask me, 200 is a joke. Why do you think Ruto has come up with this plan now? It's just, it's it's just a good today thing. Today is the 50th no, day in it government. Just, it is just a good thing. And some would think of, is it because he needs more money to implement other things in Yo, government? It's not really about thing, savings. Oh, Ruto has, has lost for money. And a time person, I never say, but I think it doesn't have to be so. It's what the president is saying, right? 200 shillings for savings, really, in the 21st century. What's it's your, not right. When, when you say we need to think about the cost of labor in the country, what would have been your recommendation? You say 200 is not good. 6% mm. doesn't look good for our average salary. It's, yeah, it's not. So what is your recommendation when you look at people's savings plan with this NSSF? Some, I believe something has to be worked out. Balance between the need to increase mm. and the reality that the salaries are too low. Okay. This is why you and say... And the, the reality that you'll antagonize employers. Okay. They will not be happy. You can talk to... I don't know that she's still a Jacqueline Mugo. Yeah. Federation of Kenya Employers. She will already be in the skies jumping up and saying, No, we can't. Because the bottom line. So you have to balance. Mm. What do people earn in this country? Are they living wages? The answer is no. Mm. What do people pay 200? Is it something 
to talk about as joke. Yes. So you need to increase. Then again, the employers are there because there is their share. Mm. You do 6%, your employer does something. What will the employer? So they need to balance. Mm. And I always argue, times like this, we need to sit down and figure out. Because the truth is 200 is not something you... We, can talk about, since, we can't even talk about it. It's been there since 2001. Yeah. But I want you to talk to me about, let's get back to Francis Atoli. He's the one who's supposed to be coming out together with the Federation of yes. Workers. Yes. He's the one who, who had made this plan not go through in 20, after the 2013 Act. They talked with the, with the team from the president and they reached to this, that this is okay to sail through. What, what do you think, why do you think he decided that they should go the government's way? I have told you one is that 200 is a joke. Yeah. We all agree. It's been there forever. Mm. It's a joke. Two, Atoll is a politician. He's a trade union, a trade unionist. There's also aspects of survival. He, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he has to work with the government of the day. And in fact, you achieve more as a trade unionist if you work with the government than if you think you can go into conflict with the government. And Atoll, being an, an experienced trade unionist, knows that. So it's not just he's looking at his skin and minding his back by working with wanting to please Ruto. Mm. The reality is also that if the mainstream trade union movement like Kotu mm. goes in the opposite direction with the government, coalition course, they will achieve very little. And that just pouncing on labor movement in the UK is a case to study. But what was the case? Because I, I don't she know. She put but... down her foot. Mm. I said, you can go to hell. And the trade unions lost. And the Labour Party has never recovered even now. Mm. Because it based its struggles on bettering the work, the, 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 the lives of workers. Mm. It gave prom prominence to trade unions. And Thatcher first head on and said, no. Could it... almost similar to what happened to Socio and Nat. Yeah. Where Uhuru said you can go to hell. So don't, that a trade union shouldn't, shouldn't push the government at the risk of the government saying go to hell. Okay. So people like I truly know that. So I wouldn't be surprised if this change of tune, uh, tune is to navigate around the idea of what Ruto wants vis-a-vis mm. -vis what is correct or what the trade unions want mm. and striking a balance there. Could it be that Ruto... You could give in... A trolley could calculate, you give in to the 6%, but negotiate for higher salaries for workers. Mm. It's a win-win situation. It's possible. I, I want to know, could it be that Ruto is now in charge of the whole government, including the trade unions, and the, he's in a place where nobody can oppose him? No, he can't be opposed. Could, could, could that be the situation we have in the no, country? No, he can't be opposed. He can't be opposed. Do you think there is a possibility of opposing Why not? Ruto People now? opposed Moi and why not Ruto? Who is Ruto compared to Moi? Moi was tougher. Mm. The times allowed Moi to be tougher. And people opposed him. Teachers went on strike. Mm. So what are you talking about? Anybody can be opposed. So this move from but a question shouldn't is a be balance. an alarm to people. It is a balance. But also the, as you strike the balance, yeah. you have also to know, am I dealing with Uhuru Kenyatta? Am I dealing with Margaret Thatcher, the only lady? Mm -hmm. Am I dealing with Ruto? So the person at the top can also inform the decision you make. Because Ruto is a person, once he's put his mind on something, he will have it. Now, let's have Peter now. So, but let's have Peter now. You, give, yeah. you make some concessions. I love you, but I ask you, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to So that could be at all his gameplay. Yeah, it could be. I don't I'm not talking to him about it. Yeah. Since these things started, I've never talked to him about it. Since since Ruta took over. Yeah. He, <laughs> it, it, people have been yeah? undercover. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into our conversation today. We'll continue speaking about the government as it is and the progressions they make. Until we do talk again, have yourself a lovely rest of your day.